On today's episode, there is a huge announcement coming and the top 10 quarterbacks. Don't miss a moment. Make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss a show all season and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Mike, the fantasy hitman, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers podcast back with you Monday, August 12th, preseason week one in the books. It's okay. Yeah, I thought it was even yeah. more than okay. I mean, there, like, there are some people gave us, some teams gave us some stuff. Some teams did not. But there was, it was more. Fun. There was more this year than I think last year, and and presumably that's that's because of the rooks uh, being uh, behind center. There was a lot of them, and uh, that that was the exciting thing. I'm I'm jumping into it right now, but uh, man, this is fun to watch. Yeah, I, I laughed at uh, McDermott in Buffalo. Like, the starters are out there, and then they're mid-drive, but then, like, the the quarter, the quarter, it goes to break because the quarter ends, and then, like, all the starters stay out there for the rest of that drive except for Josh Allen. <laughs> like, we are following the quarter rule. We're not going to finish the drive. We're going to get him off the field because we said one quarter. There, you got to follow your word. I, I just – but just for him. So annoying. I just wanted to see <laughs> the end of the drive. Um, quarterback rankings show today. NFL news to talk about. We'll, we'll talk about some of our quick player takeaways from week one and any adjustments you might be making to your rankings. We got ready to roll again on today's show, which was a big hit last week. Uh, Jason broke down the, uh, the, the the red zone situation with the defenses, the zone versus man, and um, some of the targets uh, around the red zone as as defenses change in the NFL. So we'll be doing a, a bit of a deep dive today to share with you. But I need some sort of like announcement horn. I need something. Uh, what do you got? I think we got a bigger than an announcement horn for this one. We got, yeah, let's go, baby. I, Jason was feeling what? super caffeinated right then. I did have quite a coffee this morning <laughs> right before the show. We uh we wanted to announce something exciting. This not is the, supposed to have a big gulp of coffee, man. <laughs> a big gulp, but sixty four ounces. Yeah, it's not safe. Well, uh, but later. I mean, it's appropriate for this. Yes, uh, it is. This particular event because this week, not only is it my guys' week because we'll be announcing our my guys on the show this week on one of the shows. I'm not gonna tell you which one, but it's one of them. It's not this one. It's only four more <laughs> possibilities. <laughs> but this is the week of our UDK for Life live stream. Which means uh, on Friday, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, we'll be giving away an Ultimate Draft Kit for life. We do this every year along with a signed Justin Jefferson jersey. That's oh. that's new. Yeah. So oh, How can I enter? What an incredible giveaway. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey Mouse. Mickey or the, the one <laughs> Finnish runner from the Olympics. Um you can enter by uh, simply purchasing the Ultimate Draft Kit before the live stream. So if you've bought it in the past, you're entered to win. Uh, if you have not picked it up, you're not Ultimate entered. Draft Kit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. UltimateDraftKit.com. And so, um, I mean, think about in your 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 estate planning, right? You no know, things you're passing on. Oh man, it's very important. The older ultimate, you get, an yeah. Ultimate Draft Kit. What is For, this? This goes lineage. You can. Did we say you could bequeath? I'm saying you can. Okay. All yeah. right. I'm. That's incredible. I'm pulling rank. Yeah. No. I. I. I love it. That's. Uh. And. And. But what about the four life part? <laughs> well. Yeah. That. No. That's a good point. <laughs> that is. Mm, bequeath TBD. <laughs> okay. We'll have to get back to you on whether you can bequeath it. But for the rest of your life, you will get the UDK. And let's be honest. You love the UDK. It's fun. And draft seasons are here. My my uh literally this weekend, my daughter's boyfriend's family, they all had their draft. My daughter's boyfriend's family. I don't got know. It. They're not they're not in laws yet. No, but so, soon. Like, you know. 
There's not like a it's name very, for that. Very space balls. You could have said some friends of ours. <laughs> what does that make okay, us? Okay, some friends of ours. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Def- <laughs> you bragging about you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a flex. Yeah, everybody, my daughter's got a boyfriend. <laughs> you see what's up? Yeah. She, she ain't no loser. <laughs> man <laughs> she's a but winner that's right but they got a draft going on she is now uh co-managing that roster and she will do absolutely nothing yeah that's frightening our family league's getting started as well um but ultimate get in on that giveaway it'll be a lot of fun and uh let's jump right in welcome to ready to roll presented by nissan All right, Mike, you are uh, you're going to bring us some uh, yeah. special stuff. I'm steering this car today. I, okay, yeah. Uh, so Steer we're in, by wire. <laughs> no, I'm old school, man. Okay. Full full spinnies. Yeah. of the yeah. wheel. Uh, look, it's it's draft time, and so much of the draft is, is as long as you're we're talking, you're in a snake draft here. It's ADP, the average draft position. That drives so much of who you're able to get. It drives so much of what your opponents are you're going to do. So, Because it, it's it's a guide. It's staring you in the face. No matter what your plan is or what your rankings are, you still see the ADP, and so does everybody else. And you, you have to understand that where you are, like where you're drafting, it affects your ADP. Like and they can be wildly different. So we just we wanted to highlight those things. We uh, we're working with Sleeper this year, and that's the that's the platform our leagues are on. So we predominantly talk about ADP from that perspective. But the ADPs are different. Like I said, just for an example here, onesie positions they are much lower if you're playing on the Yahoo platform. For example, Josh Allen and Sleeper, he's going at the two hundred nine. Meanwhile, on Yahoo. A full round later, Patrick Mahomes is going about a half a round later on Yahoo. Mark Andrews, a round later. So, like, onesie positions when you're on Yahoo, make sure you're checking that out because when you're giving advice of, well, I would take this player in the fourth, but you know that in your system, ADP-wise, they're going in the sixth, you got to adjust. Looking at the wide receivers, like, over on ESPN, which the default is full PPR on ESPN, the wide receivers are actually going later than the other platforms. That doesn't make no sense. No, it, no, it really doesn't. But you need to highlight it. <laughs> Speaking in italics again. <laughs> yeah, we got. So you have to be aware of these things. Drake London on sleeper, the two hundred six. We talked about his his ADP and the and the risk that is baked into it. Of you feel like you're drafting him at his ceiling. There's such a small margin for error. Over on ESPN, he's going at the back of the third right now for ADP. The boys in San Francisco. You know, Ayuk and Debo, about a full round later. It, it, pay attention to these things. Jalen Waddle, one of my favorite players of the year. Well, I'm, I'm happy to draft him in the third. I can get him apparently in the late fourth if I'm playing over there on ESPN. So it's really just make sure that you are checking these things out. I did, We just highlighted a few here. In the Ultimate Draft Kit, we have our ADP comparison tool where – Desktop only. Desktop only, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Still getting Announce. emails all weekend long. We're, we we're, will bring it to the app, I promise. We'll get it there. Lots of things are being built here at the Fantasy Footballers. But the ADP comparison tool, it is in the Ultimate Draft Kit. You can go check that out and, and see what's going on because it really is a big, big deal. When a player is going a full round later, like uh, like Malik Neighbors, we'll see what happens to the ADP because he had a little, little, little footy injury. But he's been going in the fourth on sleeper. That's what we've been dealing with all year now. I'm, I get the upside, but he makes me a little nervous at that price. But over on ESPN, full round later. And that's that's so much more palatable to me than in the fourth. So pay attention. ADP comparison tool. Check it out. Uh, another way to think about the whole average draft position discussion is just intelligence, right? You're gathering intelligence because you want to have a plan and a preparation for your draft. And I can think back to our league of record 10 plus years ago, we were so neurotic about it that we were running internal mock drafts about what we thought people would do in our right. league over and over and over again. And that was just to have expectations going into your draft. Nothing's going to play out according to ADP exactly, or according to plan. We talk about having home team bias. If you're in a 
a Packer fan draft, you might have to reach a little bit if you want your guy. But having the context of every league format, what kind of cheat sheet people might be walking into the draft with, that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, if I'm if I'm playing in Yahoo, like I using that tool, I look at Mark Andrews and Dalton Kincaid as like that that's that's part of my plan now. Right. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're fourth round on other platforms and you come here and it's like I can get him at the back of the fifth, the back of the sixth for Kincaid. It's like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at Laporta. I'm not gonna look at, at Kelsey necessarily if I think the value's there. So it, it just helps you make a plan. <laughs> Have you ever tried to convince your league to 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 go draft someplace else because you like the ADP? Someplace? I, I was, I was. <laughs> we'll move. We'll draft over here. We'll move the league back. Don't worry about that. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, can we go draft on Yahoo today? Because I've got my eyes on Kincaid. Yeah. All right, that was Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. Find your path in the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek, complete with an exclusive trim that gives extra ground clearance. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Intelligent four-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. All right, we've got news to talk about, some uh, injuries to discuss and big changes to rankings. Maybe not big changes, but some tweaks and additions and subtractions going on based on depth charts and how they're playing out in the preseason. I I wanted to just ask the question, was there a player or two that stood out to you watching the film from Thursday through Sunday? For me, there were two names. It was the performance of Braylon Allen. Yeah, baby. For the New York Jets in the in the backfield, they, you know, much much like Los Angeles, they would like a reliable change of pace, uh, give you know, Brees a break type of player. And Braylon Allen looked up to the task this weekend. Chunk plays, most effective runner of the preseason. Yeah, had had the strength, and obviously he's got the size that that we loved coming in. And also, he is a shockingly, despite being a gigantic human, he's a baby boy. He is he's, so young. He's I, twenty. He's still twenty. He 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 can't get a beer, which is also <laughs> great for his physical health. Right. Um, right. That, is, that that was that was one. The other one I'll just throw out real quick. Well, before you do, oh, I, okay. just, I had a question on Braylon right. Allen because yeah. we just did the top ten running back show, and one of the points you made was that you felt like the backup to Bijan in Tyler Algier could could maybe make more of an impact than the backups that Brees had. If Braylon Allen continues this, does that does that make a difference in the in the Brees versus Bijan of like hey, I went maybe through the thought exercise. Yeah. I, I mean I think Braylon Allen showing some explosiveness is a big deal, but rookies, trustworthiness, third downs, important drives, I think Algier has proven more of that. Sure. Yeah. Um so I, I hesitated to to overdo it through one week. The other player was J.J. McCarthy. I thought J.J. McCarthy, you know, he started uh, with an interception that looked rather ugly and, of course, gets tweeted around instantaneously, and that is his career, that one interception. But then he just carved up the defense. He was moving in the pocket well, two touchdown passes. I thought he looked incredible. So I think J.J. McCarthy – uh, was one of the guys that jumped out. Yeah, I'll, I'll hop in on the back of that because what excited me, and I mentioned it right at the top of the show, was these rookie quarterbacks, man. A, a lot of times you see the rookie quarterbacks come out and look like they're going to need a lot of time. Um, and obviously this is this is preseason. We talked about how good Kenny Pickett looked last year in preseason. You don't want to overdo it, but at the same time, they can either come out and look good or they can come out and look bad. And you would much prefer them to look good, but specifically like Caleb Williams – Oh, he looks oh, so good. He looks yeah. so good. His arm strength, and I don't even know if it's arm strength because I watch when he throws. It's like almost like in his core. He's like flexing his abs as he throws his body forward on the run uh, with a laser, and uh, he, he looked great. Jaden Daniels looked good, airing it out down the field. Uh, Bo Nix. Bo yeah. Nix finished the game yep. looking great, scoring on most of his drives. I saw his first interception being shared on Twitter, which was Jared Stidham. Um, that was, that was not Bo Nix. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was just excited because, you know, if you look at some of the changes, the, the, the kickoff rules and, and seeing like, oh, this could actually increase scoring. And you look at quarterbacks coming in, you figure how many major quarterbacks were there drafted this year? There was, uh, 
Is five? it five? Yeah. Five, yeah. Uh, six you did you... not mention Drake May in your rundown. I didn't. He didn't get much time. Yeah, we, we didn't, you know, jury's still out there. Um, but it's like you would expect that most of them won't hit. If you're just looking at most years when there's, you know, four or five quarterbacks drafted, you look back a couple years later and it's like there's two hits. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. And so if there was a world where these guys hit, what this does for the whole of the NFL is just so good. Always always great to have some new faces at the quarterback position. Mike, what do you think? Uh, Jordan Mason from San Francisco. Oh, he really did. He looked good, which is that's great of you get the – uh, the off season, the 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 whispers from the bushes starting to grow louder for him to be the backup goes out there. While I mean, granted, everyone's hurt for San Francisco, like Elijah Mitchell, who was the backup, but Mesa goes out there and plays extremely well. In in my opinion, looks looks good. And then if you want just a nasty boy, Jordan Whittington mm -hmm. from the Los Angeles Rams. He he looked like a guy who can play. Who uh, who knows at what point if he will factor into the Rams' plan this year? But he is a, a name to pay attention to. He's a rookie wide receiver. He was getting a ton of buzz yeah. before this. Like there there was a right, okay. there was a question asked on our last dynasty dynasty episode about him and whether we should believe the buzz. Obviously, they did a great job drafting Puka last year. Same round, right? No, he was a sixth round. Whitt uh, Whittington was a sixth rounder. Puka was a fifth. Um, but yeah, a, a late draft guy and he has been, you know, the, the drum beat's been heavy for him. And so for him to come out and have quite a monstrous showing was, was very good. All right. Some other news, Malik neighbors, uh, some Oof. fright on the, yes. uh, Twitter sphere yesterday, Malik neighbors suffered a mild ankle sprain. That is, he's considered day to day. That is good. Cause he had limped off. They didn't know if it was foot or ankle or what was going on. And so we're uh, we're optimistic, right? Yeah, right? Uh, yes. right? Yes, yes, we are. Yeah, that that one looked minor. He was walking. Uh, obviously, they'll they'll get more information now. Uh, with ankles, it takes a couple days maybe for the swelling to go up. But if he's back on the field in a week, then there's no concern. All right, this was unfortunate. Hollywood Brown, shoulder injury status for the regular season opener now uncertain. Uh, this is. Unfortunately, the story of Hollywood Brown for three years. Right. I mean, the, he's had these little windows of success with Kyler and and Lamar, but then injury has kind of dominated his story. And now, you know, first play, and he's off the field, spent the night at a hospital, don't know what the recovery is going to look like. There's so many names in that receiving room right now. I mean, Sky Moore played a bunch of snaps. You saw Worthy's going to get more and more time. And obviously, Rashi Rice right now is the legal situation is not impacting his play. Yeah, I mean, as of right now, Rashi Rice looks like a great pick in fantasy. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, especially where he's going, and and if your draft is in the next two weeks, he's not going to rise in ADP to the point where he should be. Um, it, uh, to me, Hollywood was already someone that was lower in my rankings, like significantly lower than his average draft price. With this happening. He's he's basically off my board. I just don't. I I don't. I think there are players in almost every round that I would just rather have. If uh, I believe that I saw that it being compared to Tyree Kill had a similar injury back a, a few years ago. It cost him four weeks. So uh, that was in game. So you're actually in season. Hill missed four weeks, came back, and then was okay. But the the point being, if Hollywood is missing four weeks right now while they are getting ready for the season. It's a it's a huge blow. Yeah, no established chemistry in season between these guys. I understand having him kind of off the board because you have to ask yourself, okay, if he comes back and he's healthy, then what is his ceiling? And there's too many other players that I'd rather have. Yeah. All right, I, I've never seen a player clear for contact more often as a news blurb than Deshaun Watson. Uh, he he's cleared for contact. He'll get the vast ma majority of reps in practice. Okay, okay. That's, yeah, like I, if he's the quarterback, but then the personality of the Browns quarterback was Jameis. Like if you wanted to merge that, do you know what I mean? I know what you're saying like because Jameis is just awesomely fun. 
Like, did you see his pregame speech? Oh, wait. Oh, I haven't no, seen you that. Guys, there's a new one? You saw You're not talking about the Nick Nick Paddywhack. Nick Paddywhack. <laughs> no, there, there's a there's his another pre, one? Yeah, he has a he's a like a Mount Rushmore of his pregame speeches <laughs> that just happened in the preseason game one. Oh man. I because gotta Jameis is incredible. Jameis is a cartoon character that is such a happy, fun guy. And and man, I wish he was better at football. <laughs> Trey Sermon, hamstring injury. We had just talked about him on the uh, last episode, I think. Yes, or Colts Colts running back, Trey Sermon, seemed like he had really locked up the job. He still could, but it was like a he's gone from the game and then immediately ruled out. Like That's a that's a pretty strong tell, too, that it's, it's a decently uh, – it's a decent hamstring injury that will take some time to overcome. You don't think that could have been because it's preseason? It's just like, hey, if you yeah, tweak it, anything, it could be. just rule them out. It could be. That's the hope. Yeah. Marshawn Lloyd. Mm. The uh, the news has just been worse and worse on Marshawn Lloyd, and now he's got a hamstring injury. He's the opposite of Deshaun Watson. He keeps popping up as not able to play. Please don't contact him. Yeah. Um, th th I, you know, they say it's not considered serious. That's great news. I consider it serious for his prospects because yes. a couple weeks ago, you kind of saw LaFleur with a little bit of frustration o over the injuries, uh, thankfully not sharing it in a Dennis Allen way, but still being <laughs> a human being. Um, and so Marshawn Lloyd, he's just not getting the reps he needs as a rookie in practice and training camp. He won't get it in preseason. So I, I very much, very much still think the second half of the year, Marshawn Lloyd, talent can win out, his explosive nature. The, he, he's, he's a late-round dart throw, a sleeper for later, but – I. He's not gonna. He's not gonna do much in the start of the season. I would be. I'd be really shocked if he's got a significant role in the first couple weeks. Xavier Leggett okay. returned to practice. Okay, that's good. Yes, exciting. And then, um, what was what was his old nickname? A star has been born. Is All right. Him? Well, we'll give you the floor. Then Patriots have released wide receiver Juju Smith Schuster. He must be what forty. 50 years old. The sun has set. <laughs> so that, that's not a star. That's just space garbage. <laughs> yes. Uh, space garbage is out there. I did. 27 years young. This is an incredible story. I dropped him in our in both of my major dynasty leagues because I had him both places. Several years ago, if you weren't playing dynasty, you might not know. If you were, you might not even remember. He was in many places the number one startup pick the 101 in startup drafts and now on waivers at 27 years old he made three hundred thirty two thousand dollars per reception last year <laughs> hey get that money juju 29 receptions all right that was today's news and notes presented by usaa insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance All right, it is time to continue our uh, rankings countdowns, and we'll talk some quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. All right, if you missed it, last week we went through our wide receiver and running back rankings. Uh, we also released a bonus episode of the show on Saturday where we re-released our February 10 Things to Remember episode. We we record that right after the season so that we can have those things fresh, but it was like you kind of need to remember them going into the next year or they're pointless. So, uh, yeah, lots of episodes. And here we go with the quarterback rankings countdown, our consensus rankings, uh, all of the tiered rankings, all of the, you know, custom scoring-based rankings. You can see those in the Ultimate Draft Kit. Print out a... Cheat sheet. At number oh wait, we need we need a countdown. Number ten. There we go. All right. Number ten. Jordan Love. Jordan Love comes in at number ten. Speaking of that shmoney. He's been paid. Yep. After a long, illustrious career, finally got the money. And in preseason, immediately threw an absolute <laughs> strike to Dontavian Wicks. That was a touchdown. And then he was done. What Do you remember where he finished last year? I believe he was quarterback five. 
quarterback five. Okay. Yep. And uh, so I think a lot of players just kind of want to know when the when to pull the trigger. There's a lot of excitement. I mean, Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud are kind of in the same category. Offenses we're excited about. Young players that uh, maybe you know had incredible seasons. It is ironic that you're hoping that C.J. Stroud takes that leap forward to have a season like Jordan Love just had, and yet C.J. Stroud is several rounds right. ahead. And, and uh, you know, I, I guess in truth you're hoping when you draft C.J. Stroud, you're hoping he jumps into the Patrick Mahomes tier versus the Jordan Love tier, but he still has not yet made that leap. But Jordan Love was awesome last season. Uh, I have him the lowest tier. This is four point – uh, four point per passing, passing touchdown. touchdown rankings. I've got him at nine in my six point, but uh, he's got weapons for days here. And, you know, there's some worries about, you know, okay, Jaden Reed has the calf. Uh, Christian Watson has no hamstrings. Um, and so you worry about health, but with the emergence of Dontavian Wicks, who seems like he could just fill in in, in a heartbeat if – Either of these guys goes down, and you, you've even got depth behind him and Bo Melton, the butter man, out there. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't even – Romeo Dobbs. Sure. The other wide receiver who – like The perceived number one target? Yeah, Romeo Dobbs, the the report the, – I'm not saying he's the the fantasy go-to guy, but just the reports at a camp are he has been the by far the most consistent wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Like He's, he's a good player. Yeah, I uh, by the way, Jaden Reed's back at practice. Yeah. with the with the calf, so uh, he's got the weapons. He was at a five point five percent touchdown rate last season. It's, it's a, worth it's a bit high. It's worth mentioning because there have been forty eight quarterbacks who have had thirty plus passing touchdowns at that five point five percent rate in the last decade, and eighty three percent saw a decrease in their touchdown rate the following year. So it's something to be aware of because that is a, a pretty high number. At the same time, he just got better as the season went on, and so did his receivers. So I think that the optimism is warranted. Yeah. And that, he's, a, he's an eighth-round pick when we're talking average draft position. That is something like I have his touchdown rate dropping. Um, but the nice thing about his elevated touchdown rate is it wasn't one of those crazy 7%, 9% touchdown. 5.5% is also it's definitely above average. It's really good, but it's a it's a number that you could stay at for a career if you're that dude. So if what he did last year, the level up, especially like you said, Andy, the first half of last year wasn't that great for Jordan Love, but the second half was incredible. If he levels up, he should be able to be right around there on, on a touchdown rate. And you've got you've just got a really nice offense, really nice system. They let him throw the ball, they let him air it out. For fantasy purposes, that's really good. I just wish he ran the ball, and that's kind of what he doesn't do that much. Just so you, uh, to reiterate your point, Aaron Rodgers' career touchdown rate is 6.3%. Patrick Mahomes' career touchdown rate is 6.4%. Exactly. So 5.5 so 5. 5. 5. 5 is sustainable. Yeah, if he's if he really is good. And that's that's what you got to decide with Jordan mm -hmm. Love because we don't know definitively. Like we mm, saw – I know. I know. You know definitively. That yeah, it's great. over. What, what about – I think the definitive is like for fantasy. I think he's a, I think he's a franchise quarterback. I I agree with that. But is it, will he be a franchise stud for fantasy football? That's TB. There there was there was. I just want to point this out because I That's I just do, D. I do think he is determined. Just determined. I do for think me. he is going to be that guy if for no other reason than the freaking magic wish that some Packers <laughs> fan made. You know. <laughs> Seriously. 60 years on his ago deathbed, and yeah. they just yeah. they are always going to get the next one every single time and it's not fair as a cardinals fan it's not fair but I, I you know this is his really his first year playing um where he came out and looked great and i just want to remind you you know Derek carr's second year his sophomore year very 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 similar 61 percent completion rate 4,000 yards 32 touchdowns at 5.6 percent touchdown rate he looked like okay he's the dude right and then it was like he is a franchise quarterback but he's not elite for fantasy because he doesn't run the ball that's my only fear with love i feel like hitting the boo button if i had it yeah, for you that, comparison that's, all, that's jordan all love to Derek carr all right moving on number nine cj cj stroud 22 years old sorry everybody 
that he's number nine. It's my fault. Yeah, it is. I mean, Jason's got him at five. I'm at eight. Mike's at 11. His ADP is the quarterback five. So technically it's both of our fault, Mike, because Jason's the only one at the ADP. I mean, it's hard to – like there's just no world where I'm taking C.J. Stroud in the fourth round. I there's have there's CJ, just no world. I have C.J. Stroud at number five. That He is my quarterback five in rankings. There is no world where I'm taking him in the fourth round. Zero at all. That's just – I don't think it's good fantasy playing the game when you look at the range of outcomes and what he would need to do. I still think, like, I've got him projected to do it, to be the quarterback five, but that's not good enough in the fourth round. The quarterback five is not going to be worth a fourth round pick from a consistency. And, you know, if I'm grabbing an early quarterback, I want a Josh Allen, a Jalen Hurts, a Patrick Mahomes, someone that could be the quarterback one. Well, explain to me the gap you see between Stroud and Jordan Love because. To me, I'm, I think I'm with Mike on this where I, I see them both very similar from an outcome standpoint. Um, you know, Jordan Love is going in the eighth round. C.J. Stroud is going in the fourth. But from a rankings perspective, you have a pretty big gap between them. Yeah, for me, it's the confidence and the weapons. Like, I like Christian Watson a lot. But Nico Collins proved he is just a, a, a superior player. I like Jaden Reed a lot. Tank Dell is, is just that – I mean – even in preseason, just yep. it's like yep. he is that guy, man. You cannot cover him. And then you add Stephon Diggs. So I, I just see it as like um, a slightly upgraded version of the same thing. So I would much rather have Jordan Love at cost because the gap, despite being, you know, in, in six point, you know, being my quarterback five or quarterback nine, there's not that huge a gap. They're, they're pretty much in the same tier, but they're in totally different places in your draft. So I, whereas a wide receiver in the ninth round, versus a wide receiver in the fourth round. Give me the wide receiver all day with Jordan Love. Do you become tempted to take Stroud if he drops to the sixth round? Because, um, you know, there aren't very many players as fun to roster as him in terms of the weapons, like you said. He had the second most air yards per pass attempt, um, the second highest completion on deep passes. Like, having C.J. Stroud on your roster is a blast. For sure, and obviously this is this is um, fantasy related. Like you know, if I'm a GM drafting sure quarterbacks, I he would be, I don't know, would he be the second one taken? Maybe, but he doesn't run the ball that much, and so you are going. We talk about this all the time. These pocket passers, they got to throw for 4,500 yards. They have to throw for north of 30, preferably 35 touchdowns to be a weekly difference maker at the position. You compare him against Joe Burrow a couple rounds later, who has done that twice. This is a projection forward. I love C.J. Stroud. I think he's going to be great. Um, but he's just not He's not a good pick in fantasy for where he's going and, and the way he scores fantasy points. Mike, you love Nico Collins. If you end up with him early in the draft, does he become does Stroud become more tempting? Uh, not not for me in the fourth. If, if he's the, the hypothetical that maybe you're in a, a league where they're going to pass on quarterbacks – be a surprising scenario, but I'm sure it's going to happen out there. In the sixth, okay, I have I spent my third on Nico Collins, and then I, I really want to have the stack for the upside. I'm okay in the sixth. It's The hardest part here is just C.J. Stroud could be one of the guys that does it. He could be the the pocket passer that jumps into the top three this year, and you, you, it's, he, you win because of C.J. Stroud. It can happen. It's just the... The bet to do that is very expensive, and the the margin of error is so small compared to Joe Burrow and Jordan Love. Like Jordan Love, Jordan Love did it. <laughs> like Jordan Love actually did it last year, and now we're just you're really hoping that Stroud does what Jordan Love already did. So it's it's a weird place to be. Number eight. Well, you just said his name. Joe Burrow comes in at number eight. Being drafted in the sixth round, where you were just talking about hoping Stroud might fall, mm -hmm. and has you know, done it twice. Yeah, he had a quarterback eight and quarterback four season. You brought him up on Hungry for More last week. Had twelve passing touchdowns before the thumb injury in five games. Was number one in completion rate. I think the the story that's kind of been pushed, Jason, is just don't forget about him. For sure. I mean, he had such a bad season last year, and that that is not just, 
okay, he got injured, and so you forget about him as far as like he missed, you know, the second half of the season. He also got injured in preseason with the calf and started the season awful. I mean, those that first month, he was a terrible quarterback. Joe Burrow is not a bad quarterback. We know that. There's multiple years of him destroying NFL defenses. He went to the Super Bowl. He's not a bad quarterback. And after the first month, well, you know, once that calf was healed, you look at his next five games, unfortunately got injured in that sixth. But that five-game stretch when he was back, 5,000-yard pace with 40 touchdowns. He was doing exactly what he did the previous two years. So, like, to me, I actually believe that, like, the, the ceiling of – C.J. Stroud is what Joe Burrow has done already in his career. I am always going to take Joe Joe Burrow in the sixth over C.J. Stroud in the fourth. He's done it multiple times. He's got a healthy Jamar Chase, a healthy T. T. Higgins. Higgins. And if you want to talk about someone who looked good in their preseason snaps, T. Higgins. Like if just the uh, the argument of is T. Higgins a one. We don't need to have that right now. Is T. Higgins a good wide receiver that if Jamar Chase is on the field and it's the, those two with Joe Burrow, I mean, that to me is like there is huge upside for Joe Burrow. It, again, C.J. Stroud could be the guy, but it's I want to I, I don't want to bet as as heavy on a pocket passer if I don't have number to. seven. Sorry, no, you're good. You're <laughs> I thought good. you were done. I thought I was done. Wait, say say your point again. Just of the number seven. Thank oh, you, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you walked man. right into it. Boston. Oh, Dak Prescott's next. I'm not even coming back to you. Um, Dak is 31 years old. It was a blast having Dak last year, and it was from week six on. So it was a it was a wonderful ride. Ended at quarterback three. And, you know, this was just the the C D Lamb Dak connection and Ferguson. And the fact this yep. offense was passing so much in the red zone was great. We were all worried going into last year that losing uh, Kellen Moore was going to be a kind of a death knell for the offense. That didn't happen, so props to Mike McCarthy for doing the right thing. Showed up big in big games. I really, I, I you know, if you look at the player profile videos, we have 100 of them in the Ultimate Draft Kit. I, I watched what we had talked about with Dak from months ago and and we're still waiting for CD Lamb to get a contract. I still think the value of Dak I'm the highest at 6, Jason at 7, Mike at 8. I think the value of Dak in the 7th round is the perfect balance to me of high, you know, obviously league winning upside. He proved he could do that over the majority of the season along with not overpaying the price. Like it's hard for me to say when you draft like CJ Stroud in the 4th round like you mentioned, he hasn't done it over the course of an entire year, but you're making a commitment to a player in the fourth round mm -hmm. that you have to start every single week no matter what, which means you don't have that option to pivot. Like last year, that was a, deci a decision people had to make. You brought up Dak and our waiver show. That was the moment in time for people, and a lot of people in that moment say, I either sign him and play a new quarterback or I stay committed to the high draft capital investment that I already made. So that's one of the challenges of taking the leap on a on a quarterback like C.J. Stroud in the fourth round is that it is a commitment to play him or a really hard one to bench, mm -hmm. where Dak, I think, is, yeah, is can, a pretty good balance. Yeah, you you can draft Dak in the seventh and be comfortable benching him. My, my, my issue with Dak is that he's going in places where there are more mobile quarterbacks. Thankfully, he did rush for 250 yards this last year. But you look at his splits last year, and when he played a top-16 defense – he was Mark of the Beast worse, 6.66 .66 points worse per game. And you look at the schedule to start the season, on the road in Cleveland, New Orleans has a good defense, and then Baltimore. So you've got three, you know, tough, should be top half defenses where he wasn't that great for fantasy as far as as good as he was against the bottom yeah, half defense. I would I'd push back of just saying the, the splits – when he's playing a top half defense, he's still right around that twenty point mark. I mean, yes, yes. So, he just wasn't the league winning. Yeah, yeah. He, yes. So, it, I think if you're if you're playing a tough game on the road and you're still like, oh, my Dak can still give me eighteen plus points, and then I know that the next week he he's going to win me the the entire matchup. He's he's a quarterback to target. His 
the career of Dak is so strange. And it, not just NFL career, but fantasy football career of he has really been good. It, 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 he's been good almost every single year. And he's been great multiple times. And yet he is still a player that just he gets drafted here. This is where he gets drafted every single year. And he can finish top three. Well, like, here's his fantasy finishes. I'm going to take out the two years where he was injured. Okay. I think okay. that's fair because the fantasy finish will be yeah. obviously low in those years. If he plays the season, his fantasy finish in his career is quarterback six, quarterback 10, quarterback 12, quarterback two, quarterback seven, quarterback three. Every single one is a quarterback one, and several of them were, you know, top half quarterback ones. Number six. Kyler. If uh, if Mike was responsible for pulling Stroud down, he is now responsible for pulling Kyler even higher because I got him at seven, Jason at eight, but Mike has him all the way up at quarterback four for 2024. And I know you have said it on the show many times, but you see the Cardinal offense as being one of the more upside-laden uh, mm -hmm. opportunities in fantasy. Yeah, it's... It, I don't know that they're going to be a top five offense. I'm not calling for that. I'm saying that every year there's an offense that takes a jump that you – it was hard to predict or rationally make a projection that this team was going to make that jump. But it happens every year, and I think that the Arizona Cardinals are the team that does it this year. They played it completely correct with Kyler Murray last year despite – oh, man, the noise – of what are the Cardinals going to do with Kyler Murray was extremely loud. Of are they going to are they going to tank and then dump Kyler Murray, trade him away, and along the way, the the coaching staff the whole time was no Kyler Murray is our guy. We got to get him ready, and they they let him fully recover from the ACL. He was not pushed, and once he got back on the field, he was Kyler Murray. Now he was certainly lacking offensive skill players. He had Trey McBride last year, but a hurt Hollywood Brown and then just a, a cast of characters who are not they are they are not main character energy is what Kyler Murray was working no, with. Last no, no, no. Greg Dorch is um he's got a bit part on the sitcom. Yeah. He's not one of the headliners. Exactly. And he has he has two headliners this year and he's back to being a fully mobile quarterback. You have to have if you to make that jump into the top three like year over year you have to put up points with your legs. It was a great run for Dak last year, but that him getting up to three, a little surprising. Where Kyler Murray at the end of the year, if he's top three, I will have it will not surprise me in the slightest because he's just he's back. He's been a great quarterback for fantasy football. QB seven as a rookie. As a rookie, QB seven. QB two the next year. QB ten because he only played fourteen games, but he was still putting up over twenty one points per game. He has been great for fantasy football when healthy, and he's healthy and now has a true number one wide receiver. It, it, Kyler Murray, to me, is the best quarterback pick in, that you can he, make. He is a layup in this year's draft. I mean, he's when he's been on the field, he's always been good for fantasy, always. He was the quarterback nine from the time he got back uh, going forward on a points-per-game basis, and last year he had the fewest receiving yards by outside wide receivers in the NFL. The reason That's is obvious because he didn't have one, and now – Marv is there. Yeah, no, it, it is exciting uh, opportunity-wise in fantasy. All right, Jason will be really happy because we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to take a what? break. What? We're going to take a break and, and then come back with the top five, which I think is – Are these accurate? Oh, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> All right, before before we took a break, um my uh, you know, Mike was kind of like I am flabbergasted. You're flabbergasted. My, I, my, I understand. My flabbers that. are gasted. You, your your flabbers, <laughs> your flabbers have been flabbers gassed. Are fully gassed up. <laughs> Anthony Richardson comes in at five. And you know what? I know why you're flabbergasted. Yes. Wow. I didn't see it until you now. Snake number five. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank you. And by the way, thank you, Al. Uh, my flabbers were also gassed. Um, <laughs> your your exclamation is because I apparently have Richardson at four, Mike at five, Jason at nine. Let me. Th this is because of four points scored. 
Um, be- okay, well, because I'm not, I'm not like acclimated to having him rank this high mentally. Just and I don't. Let I would, it wash over I, I'm you, I'm going to say this right now. There's no way I'm drafting Anthony Richardson over Kyler Murray. That's fine. That's not happening. So my rankings are bad. I have bad rankings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think when you when you look at how no, we stat people out and we project people for the UDK. These also, are... he didn't look that great throwing the football, by the way, in his first game. Yeah, because he never he has never looked. I good. Have, but I I have drawn attention to that for a while. Like Anthony Richardson, like. The the great seasons of the running quarterbacks have to come with the level up in the passing game. It happened with Allen, Lamar, Kyler. You do need that. Jalen like Hurts, Cam Newton. They, they, they yes, all, they all had – if you want to be that really, really, really elite run, fantasy game breaker, it has to be both. And so there is far more risk with Anthony Richardson of not hitting there than there is with, uh, you know, a Kyler. Uh, but – Anthony Richardson has the body that can do the 15 rushing touchdowns like Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts have done. He's got a coordinator in Shane Steichen who has, you know, done that with Jalen Hurts. Fast pace of play. You know, they've said they're not going to um, worry about him in the running game. They're going to unleash him. For fantasy purposes, Anthony Richardson has an extremely high floor with his rushing totals, and I don't mind you having him top I, five. I mind it so much. Um, <laughs> I have been informed that the the points, like because we do point projections down to the, you know, mm-hmm. um, what's <laughs> Down to the decimal, down That's to the, the word I was like, down to the yard. Down to I mean, yard. we stat all these guys, but it's out. a four-point gap between uh, four, five, and six, and I'm gonna fix that. But um, <laughs> take one touchdown away. But but I think maybe to to spin it to the positive, the fact that I am resistant to whether Richardson is a passer that can get it done on a consistent basis, and despite that resistance, being intellectually honest in my statistics and having him just end up here because we're not going into our rankings saying I want Richardson at this number we're going in putting in realistic projections based on the offense and the opportunities and I am intellectually resistant to him and yet still ended up the results still I think you're emotionally resistant to him intellectually it seems like no you, I'm intellectually you, you got him right where you uh, where uh, no, should be no number four baby I I don't I mean even in the preseason some I'll go passes. I mean, oh, I mean, of he, he hit a couple of them. To be fair, but then e- there was a couple of goes. Even when Cam was, you know, not not post injury Cam, he still had some go throws from time to time. But you, when you have the ability to throw those just sixty yard bomb passes, an go throw in the context of seeing a bunch of great is different than having. I mean, he had a game what thirty three percent completion percentage. Last year in one of his starts? Was that uh, I mean, the, the how, second full game? How did he finish fantasy wise? Injured. <laughs> uh, okay. 44, uh, sorry, 44% completion, number two overall in fantasy. Yep. The number next week he was two. injured. That, yeah. that is... No, no, no. I, look, I, he's there because he's there. I'm yeah. just saying, like, to me, Richardson is exciting for fantasy. He's also a fifth rounder. He's not going to be my pick. You, it'll be your, both of your picks. He, he, he might won't be, be I, my pick. I would no. certainly rather have Kyler when he's dropping in the sixth and seventh over Richardson in the fifth. But you know we we've, we've we've talked about it many times. Like I want the I want the mobile rushing quarterback with the game breaking upside. I want Anthony Richardson or Kyler if if I don't get Richardson or Jaden Daniels if I don't get Kyler. So the the question <laughs> is, I'm gonna so take him in league of record, right? Hey, in oh, front, I enjoy right in it. Front of you. Enjoy yeah. that ride, like. The the sophomore breakout for Jalen Hurts, he was only the quarterback nine, um, and that was off of 3,100 passing yards. That If you draft Richardson in the fifth round, you get QB nine. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, that's yeah. upset. that happened. But the next year, that's when Hurts was absolutely incredible for fantasy football. The QB three in 15 games, averaging over 25 points per week. I'm not saying Richardson's going to do that, but that was 3,700 passing yards a 4.8% touchdown uh, percentage. Like th- that's You're not committed wild. to him in the fifth. You, oh, you certainly You're are. You're going to be starting him every week. That yes. is, that's my, um, that's my hesitation is he is not, he is the highest drafted non-known commodity, right? Yeah, he, he certainly is. And you're hoping that he can be the number one. Um, 
that being said, the, the more the more that we talk through is like uh, Jalen Hurts is a great comparison, great comparison, because I I think that the path is there for him, but that probably means that it's not this season. This season is probably more of a low end quarterback one because I don't think he's throwing for thirty seven hundred passing yards, and so if you have to pull the trigger in the fifth, that means you've got to get a really outlier elite rare season from him and I'm not saying it can't happen I like this college tape I like his passing I don't think he's a I don't think he's a terrible passer I that's not what I see this gamble used to cost less yes in fantasy yes this it did. gamble used to cost be an eighth round. sixth or yeah. seventh or eighth round pick. well depending on the year so it's like man Kyler at a value later than Richardson who you're hoping can develop into Kyler seems yeah it it I I understand all of that I probably It'll be more rare for me to have Richardson as well, despite how bullish in, in my ranking on him, because it's the question of, okay, Richardson here, Kyler a few rounds later, or say I, my plan goes in motion of it's going to be Kyler and I get just absolutely sniped by Man. someone. And then it's like, okay, well, Jaden Daniels in double-digit rounds who has – can Jaden Daniels put up 3,700 passing yards and 700 rushing yards? It yeah, he probably J can. Jaden Daniels is a good discussion with Richardson because yes. it's like they're both basically brand new rookies. Uh, yes. Jay, I mean, Richardson's barely played. Jaden Daniels has a lot more football football <laughs> under his belt. Football. <laughs> he rings that football. But, but I mean, Jaden Daniels <laughs> -ling. has yes. played yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 10 times the amount of college games and just barely fewer NFL <laughs> games. <laughs> um, but with Anthony Richardson, you know, I play on sleeper and underdog usually where he's a fifth round. He's always in the middle of the fifth. So I was just curious. I looked up the, you know, in the UDK, the ADP comparison tool. Where do you think he's going on ESPN and Yahoo? Ooh. Ahead or behind? We'll just say ahead I'll, or behind. Later. Later, yeah. He's going ahead. What? He's, he's the 4'11 on both mm. platforms. That's. Oof. That's that's pricey. His PR that, team's doing good work, man. That's, I think it's too pricey. Probably for me, YouTube man. from like three months ago. All right, moving on. Number four, Lamar. Makes sense. Four hundred one right now. Mike at three, Jason at four. I'm at five. Um, the Todd Monken system worked for the NFL. Dot dot dot. And sometimes for fantasy, uh, highest completion percentage of the year of his career, highest yards per attempt. Uh, it would be hard to look at that offense and not say some similar things as you did with Kyler where you didn't have the pass catchers you expected for the majority of the year, right? Like we were dealing with injuries to Mark Andrews. Bateman will never be a thing. and Beckham was no longer yeah, a thing. Yeah, I mean, when Beckham is part of your story, you need to write a new book. But is it any better? I mean, uh, the health, no, of, Mark, no, the it's health not. of Mark Andrews is – if he it's plays huge. a full season, yeah. it's massive for him. But outside of that, you the got, ride, yeah, it's still Bateman, and and <laughs> you know, and the the wide receiver three is still Odell Beckham Jr. in the sense that it's nobody. And so, <laughs> you know, you're hoping basically that Andrews is healthy and Zay Flowers takes a step forward. Those two things are are not even unlikely to happen. Zay Flowers should take a step forward in his sophomore year. Mark Andrews. The most likely could be yeah, no, this I mean season. the most likely I mean Isaiah likely is a weapon in the mm -hmm. offense as well, but the most likely thing to happen is that they want to run the football a little bit more than they did last year because they have Derrick Henry and they can do that. And that will involve the goal line where Derrick Henry is not stoppable. And last year already, he was a C in our consistency rankings. Only forty seven percent of the time hit twenty points at quarterback. And uh you don't love that ride. It's bumpy. It's really fun when you get to watch him with a breakaway run, but you didn't really have as much ceiling with him as you wanted. Yeah, I, I Lamar is a little bit different. Mind than you, these. he's at four. Yeah, obviously he's he's great. He finishes the quarterback four last year, but the consistency or the lack of consistency in that ride is based upon rushing touchdowns from the team. When you look at the Bills, rushing touchdowns from that team are not running backs. When you look at the the Eagles rushing touchdowns for that team are Jalen Hurts. And so here, this is not Lamar Jackson near the goal line. This is Gus Bus of the past and Derrick Henry going forward. When those touchdowns come, if there's two touchdowns on the ground, which is going to happen quite often, that is a significant hampering to the quarterback production um, for 
for Lamar. So he is, he is, you know, I, I think he's where he should be, but for me, he is firmly fourth. Like he's my quarterback four, but he is a tier behind the big three. Number three. All right, Mike. Patrick Mahomes comes in at three, but not on your rankings. Nope. And you fool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gandalf. <laughs> Uh, quarterback three is his average draft position in the late third. We know Jason's really bullish, but you're the lowest. So, um, you're, are you just expecting a similar script to last season? I expect an improvement over last year. It was the second half of the year was so bizarre for Patrick Mahomes and the chiefs of looking at the games that they had lined up and every week pointing at yourself in the mirror saying, this is the week. This is when Patrick Mahomes turns back into Patrick Mahomes, not this guy who's out there giving me subpar fantasy points, and it simply never happened. And the Kansas City Chiefs offense to me may be worthy, maybe Xavier Worthy can be the answer. But it's like the the wide receiver core, we're having the exact same uh, conversations here, Rasheed Rice notwithstanding, of it's, it's a group of guys. It's a hodgepodge of wide receivers and I don't see that there's no Tyree kill on this team. And Travis Kelsey is, if they actually are going to throttle down his snaps a little bit, like they did at the end of, in the second half of last year, because they're trying to three Pete over here. How, how depressing was it to see Sky Moore get as many starter snaps <laughs> as he did? Uh, I, you know, look, in yeah, preseason, I think that was I, a Hollywood injury thing. Yeah. Hollywood got injured. And in preseason, you know, you gotta, you gotta see some things for, for roster adjustments. I, I disagree. I think that the wide the wide receiver core is incredibly upgraded this year. Okay, you've got year two Rushy Rice, which you look at the first half of rookie season, he wasn't really involved in the offense. the The second half of the year is like, okay, now he understands the playbook. He is on the field more and more. It seems when like, Mahomes was not putting up numbers. Sure, when Mahomes wasn't putting up right. numbers because the touchdown rate wasn't there. So his touchdown rate, Mahomes' touchdown rate over his career, 8.6, 5.4, 6.5, 5.6, 6.3. And then all of a sudden last year, it drops to 4.5%. That's not super normal, but he was throwing to, you know, mostly you, you had MVS and, and Justin Watson on the field for the majority of snaps at Sky Moore. Now you draft you trade up for a first round rookie, the fastest man alive in Xavier Worthy. He will be unleashed by Andy Reid. And even if he is not great for fantasy, he will be great for for Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes taking the defense and saying, hey, you gotta you gotta account for this guy who is so much faster than your defenders, opening up the middle of the field for Rushy Rice. They did, add, uh, they did add Hollywood Brown. I'm just saying Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy and a year or two Rushy Rice I think are good, and the touchdown rate is the thing that is like not usually – he had an outlierly low <laughs> touchdown rate. Nice. And so I, I in six point He's not scoring, discounted enough. In they, didn't, they didn't downgrade yeah, I'm, him I'm, enough I'm, in ADP. I agree. I think things are going to be better this year. I don't yeah. expect 17 and a half – fantasy points he'll per be week. better than quarterback eight but it's you're why do i gotta pay quarterback three price yeah you're you're getting him at the back of the third right now on sleeper like that's the question jay is your confidence in mahomes so high that you're you're willing to draft him it, it, and not i'm not just saying 312 because if you have like the 308 you're probably not going to get mahomes it are you would have to go a couple picks early is that where you are with him for the season? Well, yeah, I mean, you could you could get him at the three hundred eight. I mean, his average draft position being the three twelve means he's going to be near that three four turn. And I am okay if I'm in a six point per quarterback touchdown, you know, per passing touchdown league. I am okay. He's my quarterback one in six point leagues. Now, still, the majority are four point leagues. And, in, and what about eight point leagues? And they're still quarterback one. Man. But if you're in a four point league, I still want the the rushing touchdown upside of double digits from the big beef boys number two i want every argument to end with big beef boys okay jalen hurts he's a big beef boy jalen hurts comes in at um number two overall it's it's hurt pretty good for a couple of years quarterback three quarterback two going at 309 right now how are we feeling about that price and uh any you know he's got elite talent on the outside 
elite pass catcher out of the backfield might not get his tush pushed as much. I do worry a little bit about Saquon's touchdowns. We we talked about it on the running back episode, the fact that DeAndre Swift had a lot of carries inside the five. You don't think of it that way because he didn't have a lot of touchdowns inside the five. He had opportunities to score that he didn't. He got it closer, and then Jalen Hurts rushed it in. I can easily, easily see five of those going the other way. And if you take five rushing touchdowns away from Jalen Hurts, with last year's production, uh, you know, uh, you might be disappointed. However, they aren't going away from the tush push. If they are at the one, he's going to get the ball and he's going to put it in the end zone every single time. And he's got great weapons. I love Devontae Smith. I love A.J. Brown. I think he's got an upgraded offensive coordinator. And I just like betting on talent and the ability to, to rush in double-digit touchdowns. I mean, he could lose five and still have, you know, double-digit rushing touchdowns. Number one. Josh Allen. Excellent. Uh, we got to see them play some football without Stephon Diggs this weekend until they pulled him out in the middle of a drive. Uh, but quarterback won last year, then two the year before, then one the year before, then one the year before. So it's been automatic. 23-plus uh, points per game for four straight years. There is uh, tremendous change in this offense. Sure. Uh, you're going to have, you know, it'll be very interesting because I, I want to know what downfield Bill's offense looks like. Right now I know, like, I, the, the, the player I have the most confidence in down the field right now is Dalton Kincaid. And that's a different situation than when we had Diggs and, and even as much as I didn't love him, uh, Gabe Davis. Mm-hmm. Right now we have a a player in James Cook you could throw the ball out wide to. You, you've got a player in uh, Curtis Samuel who, you know, quick quick release is part of the game. Khalil Shakir, pretty, you know, he can get downfield. Will there be a trust there? Will Keon Coleman uh, get opportunities? Uh, he was out there. I don't think he had a target. I can double check. Uh, but I, I was watching. He was out there a lot. Yeah, I was watching them in particular to try to see distribution. And uh, he was definitely out there. I think he's number uh, zero, right? Yeah, zero targets. Zero was also his jersey number because that's zero targets. Keon hey, Coleman. Take it takes takes a uh, What's un with unique that? character no to go targets. zero. Let me just get this right. Neighbors had no targets, right? Right, correct. Um, Harrison? Well, he played like two snaps. Okay. okay. No targets. How many targets, Mike? Uh, none. Just yeah. saying, like, if we, we were so impressed with these rookie quarterbacks, we should – they should let us watch the the wide receivers like try to yeah, catch the ball. They're holding on to them. They don't want the people to know. Maybe, but uh, look, yeah, we talked a lot about Josh Allen. He's extremely uh, safe. You got to spend a second round pick on him. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't see a precipitous drop, even if things aren't going perfectly for the offense. I, I mean, what are we talking about here? He's still a top five guy. Yeah, this is a guy who we make so much about his rushing ability, and rightfully so. 763 rushing yards, 762 rushing yards. This past year, 524 rushing yards. When the when the change came, uh, the offensive coordinator, he was on pace for 640 rushing yards. I don't have the number in front of me, but it's right around there. But we don't give enough credit to the fact that he the reason he's the number one yes. three out of the last four years is because he's throwing the ball for 4,300, 4,200, 4,400, 4,500 passing yards. So there is a little bit of worry that that passing yardage comes down without Stephon Diggs. He was on pace that second half of last year once the offensive coordinator change was made for right around 4,000 yards, which is, you know, that's not what Josh Allen has been doing. That's, that's several hundred yards under. But 4,000 yards with... 600 rushing you're still a top two quarterback so he might not be lapping the field but he's so consistent so safe and I do think that Dalton Kincaid steps up this season I mean that's just the normal projection and timeline for most tight ends is that their rookie year they're behind the curve and now he's been great at camp and I expect big things from him this season so Alan at number one Mike anything you want to throw in there are we good no, wrapping up the countdown he is great I do feel I feel a little apologetic that, you know, when you have a top 10 quarterback countdown, we're mostly highlighting ways it can go wrong because they're already, like, the ranking itself imbues the fact that we think it can go right. 
Yeah. And so a lot of the times we're just highlighting things to be aware of so you can make that decision in your draft, team context, how things can go one direction or the other. Because you got to, I mean, if you draft Josh Allen, it's in place of another highly productive player. Um, so there's our top 10 quarterbacks. And I, and I think it is worth, I know we mentioned him earlier, but it is worth throwing Jaden Daniels' name in here as the 11th guy because he is a great, great target at the end of your drafts. You know, right now he's he's not very expensive. He's cheaper than anyone we talked about his, on ADP. Uh, yeah, where's his current average draft position? He's in the tenth round, ten oh five. And so this is a this is a guy who is very, very, very similar. I think I think he's not quite as good as Kyler Murray was, but he's very, very similar. And he's got Cliff Kingsbury as the offensive coordinator. Kyler's rookie year, he was the quarterback seven. That is completely in the range of outcomes for Jaden Daniels is, is being a top 10 quarterback and you can get him for free in the 10th. If I mean, yeah. honestly, you should draft him in the 10th. Like even if you've got a quarterback, yeah. you should draft Jaden Daniels if he's there in the 10th. All right. A, uh, one more reminder, the ultimate draft kit for life giveaway this Friday, plus a Justin Jefferson signed Jersey. We're going to give those away two separate winners. All you have to do is order the 2024 UDK by Friday at 6 30 PM. Eastern we'll be giving it away live while we answer questions on Friday. It'll be a blast. So ultimatedraftkit.com to check that out. Later this week, we're, we'll be getting into the top 10 tight end rankings, our top 10 tips and tricks to win your league. Uh, we'll be doing a mock draft this week. And, of course, the, the My Guys, guys. on this week's show. So don't miss a minute of it. That'll do it for today's show. Shout out to the guys over in Deucer's Alley. Wearing the really cool garb over there. So, thanks, guys. Catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.